Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of McCall Media TV and this evening I am talking to the lovely Chris London who's got some fabulous Facebook strategies for us for engaging our audience. How are you doing Chris? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. I'm kind of looking forward to today's session. Look, I'm getting even getting comfy in my seat for you and I'm getting ready. Oh, I've got my piece, of, you know, it's all here, ready to go. So um, I'm going to I'm gonna let you sort of drive now. Introduce yourself and tell us what you're all about. Okay, so for those who don't know me, my name is Chris from Chris London Online. I help businesses with their social media. Uh, just to give people a little brief background about myself, I launched a, a driving school 10 years ago, which I um, publicised through um, social media. Grew the driving school over three different counties and three years ago launched an online course which I sold through Facebook. Uh, that course has turned over £250,000 um, in the last couple of years and continues to uh, have a large turnover at the moment. More recently, probably over the last two or three years, I've been helping, started off with the driving schools obviously because that was my niche area, but since then I've been helping all different types of businesses to increase their social media presence using techniques that I know that work. So not other people's um, things that they've read in a book, but ideas that I know work and I've used in my business myself. So I work with estate agents, um, mortgage advisors, solicitors, computer companies, telecoms companies, all different ranges of clients in all different niches, because I know that the strategies work. And um, although they're different industries, the same strategies seem to work in different industries as well. Like I say, I'm very much been there, used my own money with Facebook ads, but also the organic side of things as well. So it's not about stealing off other people's stuff. It's about, you know, these are, this is stuff that I've learned and then tried and tested. Cool stuff. So um, are you going to give us some juicy nuggets of tips and strategies that we can actually start doing this evening by the time we're finished with you this evening? Yeah, 100 percent. I'm going to give you some tips, tricks, things that you can put into place pretty quickly to get your business out there. It's all about visibility. So that is what we're going to be making sure you get by the end of this session. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. OK, so um, I'm going to let you fire it away and I I'm ready to like take notes, literally. So, yeah, uh, yeah sure. fire away. So talk, first of all, I'm going to just talk about why people should use Facebook to start off with uh, okay. for their business. So Facebook, for example, has 2.2 billion monthly active users. Okay, so this is people that are going on Facebook every month. Now, over one and a half billion of those people are active on Facebook every single day. Now, that's great because... Um, Obviously, we know there is an active audience out there, but there is 80 million small to medium sized businesses. And that is a 23 percent increase from the year before. So one of the things I get a lot of the time uh, when I'm speaking to people is why should I use Facebook if I'm B2B and not use LinkedIn? Now, like I say, there's 80 million small to medium sized businesses. 23% increase on last year and 6 million of those are advertising on Facebook every single year. 54% of B2B marketers said that Facebook was the most important platform for them. So it actually rose by 11% last year and LinkedIn's popularity actually dropped by 9% last year. Oh, I didn't know that. No, that's yeah, quite so interesting. Facebook is stepping it up. Um, it's just a different way, I say. Um, the, the business owners are on Facebook. They might be on there for a different reason. They're on there to socialize, whereas LinkedIn, they may have business mode. But I like to think of it as it's a bit of a cold audience and they might be either in two different stages. They're um, either aware that they've got a problem but haven't seeked whatever solution it is that you provide, or they may not even be aware that they have a problem at the moment and therefore you need to make them aware that there is a problem maybe agitate the problem a tiny bit and then give them the solution. Because social media works in a very different way to even Google, for example. So Google, there's a massive intent to buy. Um, you know, if I want, say, a social media coach or a driving lesson or whatever, I will go onto Google and I will search for social media coach in Nottingham or wherever you are. I have an intent to buy. I don't have an intent to buy when I'm on social media. I have to be made aware that I have a problem, or I need to see your solution and your value, and then be able to um, think to myself, okay, that person can help me, or when I need something, maybe six months down the line, 
instead of thinking I'm going to Google, I'm going to think, hold on, I've seen that person on Facebook. I feel like I know them. I trust them because they turn up every day. So therefore, I'm going to go to them as opposed to go to some random person on Google that I don't know. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Actually, I have to say I'm a bit of a Facebook fan. So this is quite nice for me because sometimes, you know, when you when um, I've had a couple of years out, so I've kind of kind of got back into the saddle, as it were. And sometimes, yeah. you know, when you have that moment of like, oh, is this the right thing? It was right three, four years ago. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you have that little bit of a, a moment of self-doubt and it's quite nice because you're kind of reinforcing. Now, some of the stats that you've just told me, I I, I wasn't aware of because I have, mm -hmm. like I just said, been out of the saddle a wee bit. But that's been quite interesting with regards to the LinkedIn bit with, the, with their traction dropping because one of the mm -hmm. things that I haven't done is ever been that proactive on LinkedIn. I've mm -hmm. always put all my eggs in the basket with regards to Facebook because I actually quite like the whole power editor and how they structure yeah, their sure. Facebook adverts. I think it gives you a lot of power but um I know we'll probably touch on that in a minute but I've never really mm. played with LinkedIn and one of the things that I was kind of paranoid a little bit about this kind of year was actually am I now in the wrong place should I actually be going on LinkedIn and mm. it's quite nice to know what you've just said because you're actually going no Ange <laughs> you were <laughs> right you're you you yeah. know what you've done for the last three or four years despite your little time out has been right so that's it I mean Facebook is still the biggest social media platform out there regardless of you know any up and comers you know we've got TikTok that's that's growing massively at the moment we've got LinkedIn which I like to think of LinkedIn as Facebook from a couple of years ago. It is grow it is it is certainly somewhere you can still get work from. Um, and there are certain tactics you can use on there. That's probably for another video. But it certainly shouldn't be ignored. But the best, you know, the best strategy is to have a multi-platform approach to things. So we should be on Google, we should be on Facebook, we should be on LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, wherever. The, the, because then, you know, it's all that brand awareness, that visibility. We need to be everywhere. But Facebook certainly has its place. And I hear too many times people saying Facebook is B2C, LinkedIn yeah. is B2B, and that's the way it is. Oh, you know, I'm living proof. I, I absolutely love Facebook. Facebook is my platform. Um, I've built a biz, I've built multiple businesses on it and help businesses with it now. So Facebook's my baby, not officially my baby but um, <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg's. <laughs> I wish it was I'd be a lot richer um but you know they, I couldn't thank Facebook enough for what they did for my business and now I'm trying to help you know get people the same results for themselves so uh let's take it from there then so if you are fresh to Facebook advertising yeah. where would you start what would you suggest somebody does because I know how I approach things but everybody obviously has different tactics so yeah. share, share some light on that <laughs> I always I always say to people at the start, you've got to get the basics right to start off with. There's absolutely no point where, you know, if you're going down the organic route or you're going down the paid ads route, there's absolutely no point in sending them to a Facebook page that's absolutely rubbish. OK, you must get the basics right. So five things that I say about setting up your Facebook page. Number one, make sure your profile picture represents your business. So it depends on how big your business is. If your business is centered around you, so, you know, let's use yourself as an example, like McCall Media, you know, Andrew McCall, it is you. Yes. There is no reason why your profile picture shouldn't on your business page be you. It would be strange for it to be something else in my opinion. People buy from people at the end of the day. If you're Coca-Cola, you don't put a picture of Warren Buffett or whatever Wherever on, it is, on yeah. it. Yeah, we have a logo because we're a big, they're a bigger brand. Okay, so get your profile picture right. If your business is centered around you, get your face in your profile picture of your business page. Secondly, sort your cover photo out. And what I mean by that is so many businesses that I speak to and go and have a look at their pages, it fits on desktop. And then you put it on your mobile phone and it doesn't fit in the box. Yeah. Straight away, you look unprofessional. You look like you don't know what you're doing. So make sure it's optimized. Make sure it fits on desktop and on your um, mobile phone or mobile device. Now, there's loads of things you can use in your cover photo. Um, we can showcase products. We can, you know, give people an idea of what we do. We can put our strap lines in there. Um, like I say, if you're a business, let's talk about, say, a cafe or a bakery or something like that, you can showcase your products, special offers that you've got on. If you're a site where people go to visit, 
Um, you can show people visiting that location to show popularity so other people can imagine themselves being there. You can show authenticity for your product. So there's lots of things we can do with our cover photo. And we do want it to um, have some clarity between the profile picture and the cover photo. But your cover photo can change as long as those details about your business are still on there. So we can be switching between the cover photos and mixing it up a bit. Can I just um, just jump in there real quick? Because mm. whilst you've just been talking, what I've just done is I've loaded my Facebook page. Can I just yeah. quickly jump in and just show people a couple of examples of what you've yeah. just said? Um, I, I was also quite of relief to see that it was actually my face that was on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> I I like, I I thought, while I was talking, I thought, I hope I've not dropped her in. No, 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 that's cool. What I'm just going to do, because one of the little challenges a lot of people have, and um, with regards to the header itch, itch, like you just said, is when you start... Uh, trying to work out sizes and dimensions and things like that. What often happens is um, it works on the desktop, but it doesn't then work on the... Yeah, exactly. Right, okay. So I was just going to show people a little trick on how to get around that whilst we're talking about it, if it's relevant, if that's okay, yeah. just for two seconds. Yeah, sure. Now, um, this is my Facebook page. And as you can see, yes, I've got my my actual photo. So I've already got a big tick tick from, uh, from, from you. Um, if we go to my change my cover, what you're going to mm -hmm. actually do, let me see if I can do this live because this wasn't something that I was planned um let's see if I can bring it up now this is let's see if I can get one up I think this is the latest one now you can see that I've had three or four different attempts um right so I'm going to use this as an example if you look carefully what I've done is I've actually played now the image that you don't see at the bottom if I look like that just there can you see how I've I've styled my image so if mm -hmm. you look at the top of the text and the top of my head there's probably like a centimeter gap but the actual image itself has a good old space above it and a good old space below it that you don't get to see so like this Ask McCall Media here when I actually position my header, you don't get to see it. I'm just going to save that and show you what that looks like when we actually resize the, the browser. Let me just wait for it to catch up. Because when you actually resize the browser, this is one of the little bug bearers that I've actually had quite a few times. Let me see if I can make it look like a um, mobile device. Is it going to play game with me? My, this is one of the challenges that happens when you do something live, Chris. <laughs> You should practice these things beforehand, right? I don't think, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not coming up live. But if you was to go to my site and look at it on your mobile phone later, let me just mm -hmm. bring you back up. You'll be able to see that the, the rest of that image that you can't see at the moment because it's cropped for the desktop will actually display nicely on a mobile phone. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize. So what I'll they do- They just don't check it. They no. just don't check it. They, they do it on the computer. They think that looks nice. And then they, they switch off. And not many people then go necessarily back to their page and go and have a look at it themselves. And on so, tablet. You yeah, know, it's, it's about going and just having a double check, check it on both devices. Definitely. So what I'll do is I'll put some dimensions of sizes. So if you wanted to go into something like Canva or do it yourself later, you know what size dimensions to work with. So I'll help people out with that one later. But yeah, that's that's a really cool point. So I, I stopped you mid-flow. You was up to cover that, photos. That's <laughs> OK. So yeah, so we've, we've sorted a profile picture. We've sorted a cover photo. The next thing, one of the massive things, there's a blue button, um, which is your call to action button. What do you want people to do? The amount of times I go to businesses and that button still says add button. Okay. <laughs> so yes. we need to decide what we want our customer to do. Do we want them to send us a message? Do we want them to give us a call? You can get WhatsApp messages through that now. You know, you can direct them to your own website. What do you want? What's the best course of action? Different businesses work it in different ways, but either way, you must have a call to action button on there to give your customers an easy route through. So Angela's just popped up the, um, the screen so they'll be able to see. That's it. So I, I'm obviously promoting my group, which is, I think, how we connected. But yes, in yeah. that sense, at the moment, I'm visiting my group. But yes, right. so that, that's the button that Chris is talking about. And if you see very carefully, when you're logged on, you get the little, uh, what's it, a pencil, I think it looks like, yeah. next to it to be able to edit it. So that, that's where you're going. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, one of the other things is the business of the about section or the bio section. So people don't fill it in enough. Um, so when people are coming to have a look at your business, they may go onto the about section to find out contact details, email addresses, telephone numbers for you, description of what it is that you do, and also 
in that section when you fill it in, not only do you need to make sure you fill your description in fully, put keywords in there because it works the same as Google would work with ranking keywords for SEO. Oh, I didn't know that. That was quite handy. Yeah, so okay. it will only work obviously in the Facebook search, but if I yeah. was typing in um, a topic that I was interested in and in the top search bar, it looks for keywords and it also looks for the tags as well. So when you fill in the about section, there'll be some tags that you can enter in there. Uh, put some tags in that are relevant to your business, some of the keywords, and you'll then be more searchable and found more easily on uh, Facebook searches. But like I say, fill the description in, not just for the search results, but also to give your customers the information that they need, what it is that you offer, because it may not be obvious necessarily from your business name. They might just want to check a little bit more detail out about you. So there you go. I've just brought your page up this time to to sort of show people as an example. But you yeah. you obviously have got the different message. Obviously, this was a couple mm -hmm. of seconds ago. And then uh, you're about page. So, yeah. So I just thought I'd yeah. give you a bit of exposure this time as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> so just keep that page up just for a second, if that's OK. Down the left hand side of the page, what you'll see is the tabs. OK, so we can see. I mean, I can't read it. It's a little bit small on my screen, but home, posts, services, videos, video. videos photos, <laughs> events. Exactly. Now, not a lot of people know, but you can actually move these tabs around by, by, by going into your page settings. OK, you can move the, um, the tabs around and um, organize them in an order, depending on what it is that you do most of. So, for example, if you want to, if you have some amazing, great reviews, you'd want to stick that, make sure it's up there, make sure people can see it. If you've got, um, you know, some great posts or you do a lot of videos, you know, I like to do a video a day um, we've got videos up there um, on the left hand side so what you can do is you can add tabs you can take tabs away and you can reorder them so have a think about the type of content that you're putting out there and make sure that it is um, organized in a way that you want to show is best going to showcase your business really so get the reviews up there one of the interesting things is and not a lot of people know this hopefully you haven't got a load of bad reviews but if you did have some bad reviews you can actually hide the reviews tab so that you don't even need to show it now hopefully no one's going to be in that position but if you've got some great reviews make sure your reviews on there because social proof is massive at the moment showcasing your business from other people's recommendations is a great way of getting your business name out there Cool, cool stuff. Okay, so I'm just looking down um, right now. Let's let's just move on to some of the analytics because I know you mentioned that a minute ago and I've actually just picked up a top tip. I actually had, hand on heart, no idea that Facebook had the keywords. I know the tags, um, but I didn't realize yeah. about the about page. So what other sort of analytics and insights should people be sort of looking into with regards to their Facebook page when they're, they're trying to see how they're getting on? Yeah, so I mean, one of the things that people don't know or don't check is the Facebook analytics and the insights. So you can get those from the top of your page. Uh, obviously, you'll need to be an admin of the page. You can get them at the top. It's in the insights section. And you can get a massive range of data that people just don't know is there. So the data that we can get from there is we can see when our audience is most active. So we can see what days of the week. Now, what it's doing is it's picking people who are page likers, and it's looking at their data and seeing when they're active. They don't necessarily have to be active on your page at those times, okay? What we're looking for, if you could just click on the reach tab down the left-hand side for me. Okay. okay, I have to confess, I haven't looked at my Facebook stacks for a long time, so I'm probably gonna get a bit of a slap on the hand right now because I have no okay. idea what's gonna be revealed here, but go, yeah. go for it. Okay, so this is, uh, <laughs> this is, pay, this is post reach or pay um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is what this orange graph is that's in front of you and you can break it down organic or paid, okay? And if you hover over it like you are doing, you'll see the stats. Now, what we're looking for there is days when there's peaks and days when there's troughs, okay? And we want to know what we did on the days where it peaked and what we did on the days where it was low. So we want to do, it's pretty obvious, but more of the stuff on the high days yeah, and less of the stuff on the lower days. So, so it, it may be that you asked an engaging question, you got loads of engagement, which meant you got more visibility uh, or people just generally liked it. If it's, uh, it's, if it's one of the downward ones, it could be that you just, you know, forgot to post or didn't post on that day. Um, but we want to do more of the stuff that works and less of the stuff that doesn't. So in a nutshell, that's that. And if you scroll down that page, you can see all different types of data. We can see reactions, comments, shares. You can just scroll it down a little bit further for me. Uh, just stop on that one there. That one, not the orange one at the bottom, the one just above it. 
that is your hide or report as spam. Now, no one ever checks that. OK, now this is negative feedback that people have got. So there's one day there where you've got something. And to be fair, we're always you're always going to get something. You're all, you're always going to get something. somebody not being happy with my Facebook page. Someone, someone's not happy now. Oh, um, <laughs> now, I can't see the metric down the left hand side. But how many people is it? Is it just one one person or it's just one person? That's just why it's person. a very big peak. But I'm just trying to think what day of you, the week. That's probably you're, you're always going to get it. So don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> one person is nothing. But if you suddenly had 10 people on one day, you would oh, think, OK, well, there's something wrong here. One, the problem with it is, is obviously you are losing people. But second of all, Facebook is monitoring this negative feedback. Facebook okay. is all about keeping people on Facebook as long as possible. So the more you give people a positive experience, the more you'll be seen. So, for example, the more likes and comments you get, the more visibility your business gets. Because I think that's, I was going to say, that's kind of fair to say, to be honest with you, with pretty much as the rule of thumb for all social media, because yeah, I, I, exactly. I kind of, it doesn't matter really which platform you post in, that first 60 minutes is like key. That's like yeah. the gold dust time. And then you've got like the first 24 hour traction. And then that's obviously fair. it, you know, anything after that kind of is great, but it's lost mm -hmm. its emphasis compared to if you'd have done it in that first 60 minutes. That's it. I mean, if loads of people are hiding your posts and reporting it negatively, you know, reporting it as spam, things like that. Facebook thinks, okay, this person's putting out some bad stuff. I'm going to show all of their posts to less people. Facebook's interest is to keep people on Facebook as long as possible. And the longer it keeps people on Facebook, the more adverts it can show, therefore, the more revenue they make. So it's all about giving people a positive experience. Just down the left-hand side of the tabs, if you can just click on the one that says posts, it's just a little bit further down. Uh, okay, yep. yep. Okay. Oh, God. I, again, I don't here. know what you're going to see here. So. No, no, that's no, no, fine. Okay, <laughs> I'm probably right. on the spot now. Um, yeah. Across the top, we've got the days of the week, okay, okay. Uh, above that graph, yeah. So these are the days of the week. Now, this is page likers and when they're at – these are your page likers and when they're active on Facebook. doesn't mean they're active on your page. just means they're – likers of your page and they're active on Facebook so if you look at those days I mean I, I really can't I can't see because it's too small but right so what most businesses see is there's not a massive peak on one of the days it tends no. to be spread fairly even it's now, because, varying from 109 to 111 so I've literally yeah, got so, 113 so a ratio of four people different so yeah so not a massive difference so from that data we know that it doesn't really matter on what day of the week we post um, but what we're looking at and what you're looking at below is the graph. OK, so mm. that is telling you when your audience is active. Now, Facebook is really helpful because it puts it in Pacific time zone for you. So um, which is really not helpful for us in Greenwich Mean Time. So when you look at that graph, you need to translate it back about eight hours. OK, <laughs> oh, OK. Because if you if you just scroll up a tiny bit on that page, oh, yep. you'll see it does say Pacific time zone. If you read across on that line where that's oh. the line down. Oh, yeah. okay. So yeah, so we're in the we're in the states, aren't we? So yeah, if we go yeah. back eight hours, that's it. So if you look at your graph, the the big dip that you've got, that's the middle of the night, okay. But okay. interestingly, by looking at your graph, there's not a massive difference throughout the day. No. Okay. So many many B two C businesses will find that it starts off like this, and then as the evening comes, it starts to pick up. Okay. So. No surprise, you're more B2B. So, well, you are B2B. I, should say. I am. More, more, <laughs> not more B2B, you are 100% B2B. So, yeah, this is why we've got this line like this. But a B2C business will see a peak at around seven, eight o'clock at night. Okay? okay. So, they need to be peak, peaks at about eight. So, they need to be posting at seven o'clock to catch the, the wave, so to speak, to make sure that they get it. Because if you post it at eight when your peak is, you're going to get people at nine, ten o'clock looking back, whereas we want seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and so on. So it is important to know what time your audience is mostly online. And if you have got a big peak at a certain time, you need to be posting at that time to make sure you get more organic reach. Just going down a little bit, um, yeah. you can see all the posts that you've put out. We can see the orange bar, the length of the orange bar tells us how much reach it got. Uh, we can see the reactions. So what I'd be looking at is I'd be comparing the graph that we looked at before with the peaks and troughs okay. with the data that we've got. And if we clicked on any of those posts, you'll be brought up with even more data about that. So if you click on, is that a video one? If you yeah, click on it, dream click on the video one. one. Okay, I'm just going to wait for it to, oh, I have done, but it's not, hang on, there we go. Right, okay. oh, 
Okay. And we can see down the right hand side, um, we can see a load of data. But one of the most interesting things is if you click on um, audience and engagement on the right hand side, so just uh, yeah. click on that. Um, Oh, there wasn't right. one. Got an affording <laughs> data in on that one. However, what you would see in there is that Facebook loves video at the minute, so it will reward you with extra analytics that you don't get with a photo oh. post. Now, so, would that be because this is a this was a stream um, a stream like what we're doing now? It was a live uh, video, so mm -hmm. would that be different yeah. to video that you've pre-recorded and uploaded? Pre-recorded and put on. It will track right. live data as well. Um, but maybe because you're using that stream yard or yeah. something, it, it loses it. But but with photos, you tend to just get, you know, how many people looked at it, how many likes, comments, shares. With video posts, you, what you get is, an first of all, you can see audience retention. So you can see how long on that video they watched before they started to switch off. So we can know whether, you know, our audience has got an attention span of one minute or, yep. or shorter. One of the interesting clients I worked with, they had a big drop off after a couple of seconds. And actually, the reason was, was they introduced the video. Then they had the logo swirl around. And while that was swirling around, everyone switched off. We took the logo swirling around out and the audience retention stayed. So oh. you can track that data. Now, what you can also track is who your top audience is. So if you clicked into it, you'd be able to see um, who your top audience was. So you'd be able to see if it was, it would say like females 25 to 34, for example. And we'd know then that if we wanted to run a paid advert, that the people who interact most with our posts are females 25 to 34, for example. So when we're on a limited paid ads budget, we want to make yes. sure that we whittle that audience down and niche it down as much as possible. Definitely. Okay, so where would you go to get that actual particular information? Sorry, I didn't catch where it was. Um, yeah, so that would be if you went back to where the video was at the start. Okay, let me just see if um, I can help. Yeah, so that, uh, if you just go back, click on to one, any of your video posts. Yeah, uh, video posts, okay. So if you the... just click on it and wait for it to load up. Yeah. Um, okay. And then it's in the so on the right hand side, you'll see that one that says audience, audience and engagement on the right hand side. Just that's right. I've just realised which video. Can I just come out? Because that's yeah, us. yeah, sorry, yeah that's the video, our yeah. current stream. That's us. That's why we was an echo feeding back. So I don't know if other people caught that. So let me just go on one. Sorry, I just realised it was yeah, the. No there we go. So, so yeah, say on that, the right hand side, we've got audience retention. A couple down. That's it. Audience retention. So that will show perfect. us where people are picking up and, and, and switching it off. That's really powerful, yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's awesome. And then if you go back, if you just click just at the top of that graph, there's a, there's a little back, I think. Yep. Yeah. And then the audience and engagement. Um, Which is where we were a minute yeah. ago, yeah. This was it will be in there. You'll yeah. see that there's one that says top audience, one that says top location. So yeah, there's just not enough data. Know, it's, but yeah. it's England and it's females 25 to 34, for example. Got, got you, got you. Okay, that's okay. cool. Yep. So there are the two. I mean, there's masses of data inside the analytics and there's no way time to go through absolutely everything. But they are the two tabs that I look at most of all, reach tab and posts tab. If you want to know what works. And if I tell you just a very quick story about. Um, so I launched an online course. I won't um, bore you with the details, but long story short, I, like I said, I used to be a driving instructor. I launched an online course for theory. Now, the people I taught to drive were 17 to 24 mainly. Yeah. When I launched my online theory course, I thought 17 to 24 year olds, this is the market. This is who I've been teaching for the last seven or eight years. I looked at the analytics three or four months in and actually it was females 25 to 34 that were buying it. And the reason was, was because they didn't have the confidence. They were starting to, you know, the 17 year olds were sort of, I can do this myself. I'll buy an app. When I checked that data and I seen that that was the analytic and targeted my adverts to that, my sales jumped double in the month because I targeted my ads to the people that were buying rather than who I thought were buying. So just because you think that these are the people in your audience, look at the analytics. The, I do a presentation called the stats don't lie. And yeah. the, the stats don't lie. Look at the analytics, don't presume. And just because their analytics are that way one month, you yeah. have to keep an eye on them. Especially now, um, you know, current situation we're in at the moment, People, the time of day that people are active nowadays at the moment all over the place. is all over the place. It's not just the evening because a lot of people aren't working in the day at the moment. So, you know, things change. So your analytics change. So keep an eye on them. 
that's to me that's really cool because one of the things I've not done and this is why I've just found what you've just explained really interesting like I just said to you at the beginning of our chat I live in power editor when it comes to doing any kind of adverts and things I've never really gone in and looked at it from this perspective uh, mm. this perspective before and so um I mean I've known the insights there I haven't dived this deep what I've done is kind of looked at that first page and thought yeah 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 you know and you just move on and like I said to you it's been a wee while since I've looked in because at the moment my focus has been on LinkedIn and uh, YouTube so but yeah. you've just given me all sort of my brain cells are going oh I could do this and, yeah that'll be you tomorrow morning tapping away <laughs> the yeah the uh, peak peak there yeah but no that's really been that's really been powerful for me because although I I, I kind of was already doing everything that you were saying with regards to placing adverts. I, like I said, I do it from inside Power Editor. And when I'm yeah. planning a advertising campaign, one of the things that I've been telling my clients is that, you know, you always tweak one tiny thing and you leave it to run for 48 hours, see how yeah. that strategy works. And you literally play that tweak off against three or four other variations of the same advert so that you can see which one is like the front runner. And then yeah. that's how you win, you know, you put your money behind the back, the, the winning horse, as it were. And that's kind of the strategy I've always adopted. Yeah. But I've never done it from this side. And I just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, why not? Yeah. I mean, one of the, <laughs> it's interesting you talk about the fact, you know, of, of split testing results because yes. I know we're probably jumping straight to paid ads all of a yes. sudden. But, but, but just to mention it while I've, uh, while, while you brought it sort of to my attention. The amount of clients that I speak to and they'll say, I've got these two adverts running and this is one advert with this picture and this is a video advert with a completely different bit of text and this one's going to a website and this one I'm looking for. And they'll say, and I'm like, well, I don't know which bit made it better because it's completely different. So you should always, like you mentioned, just tweak one one thing. (laughs) Because if you tweak one thing, you know what's better. Like I say, you know, have the same creative one two three times and then have three different lots of text when you know which text works best switch the creative only change one thing because yes you're playing a bit with your budget you're gonna but you've got a plan for the fact that you're testing the budget out because otherwise you are chucking money away and long term you will lose more money from Doing yeah, it the other way. completely. It's also one of the things that I first say to people is also don't touch the boost button because the thing is when you do, people, you you know exactly where I'm going to go now, but people don't know what how Facebook have decided to share that advert. So if you hit gold with that boost button today, that's great, but how can you read and repeat? Mm-hmm that strategy because you don't know how they've decided to show that advert so um i just thought i'd throw that in there because i see that yeah. as one of the biggest things in people go oh, it's only a fiver but i'm like yeah but a fiver today tomorrow this time next week you know that five pounds could be really powerful stuff if you knew what yeah. was working for you if you'd have just done it a different way yeah so. i mean facebook make it so easy for you to hit the boost button you know reach Ten thousand more people for <laughs> just this amount of money and it's right in front of your face and the temptation to hit it and um, yeah, like you say, people get quick wins from it. They get, uh, yeah, I got two clients last night. Brilliant, but you know, the you next do it? month <laughs> that you do it, you're going to get absolutely nothing more than yeah. like. But you, you're much better running it through the ads manager, knowing what objectives you're running, knowing what all the creative side of it and everything that you can get. The the power of the ads manager is crazy. Um, even for yes. interest targeting and data that you can get. Like I said, I live in there. I've not done it this side. So, yeah, yeah I'm a data girl. <laughs> right. I, I think we've got time for, like, one more quick question. Yeah. I'm just looking over here on here. Um, someone, uh, so your is it worth having a Facebook group? Now, I'm going to say yes, but I'm going to let you run, run with this yes. one. I think is the should. answer. So there are two 200 million members of meaningful Facebook groups. Okay, so Facebook class is a meaningful Facebook group as something that is your is your day-to-day life. So people will be members of groups where they, they may dip in every so often and out, but there are 200 members of meaningful Facebook groups where people are it's an active part of their day, shall we say. Now, that's doubled since last year. Now, Facebook's five-year plan is to have one billion meaningful members of groups. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. That's quite interesting. But that's their plan. Now, there is already one billion members of groups. They're just not meaningful to people. Okay. So yeah. that's right. So Facebook's algorithm works so that it prioritizes um, connections, so friends, family, but also communities over brands. And so what I mean by communities is groups, and what I mean by brands is pages. 
Facebook made this big thing. Um, I think it was at the start of last year where they were switching away. From, you know, we're going to make organic reach less. And the reason we're doing that is because we want social, we want Facebook to be social like it was meant to be. No, what Facebook actually wants is you to spend your money to be able <laughs> to make some money from your page because they know that your page is just there to sell to people. Your group is around basically a community for people. OK, so just to give a couple of examples, if people don't know. So, for example, let's use David Beckham. Only David Beckham is allowed David Beckham page. OK, he is David Beckham. But we can all have a David Beckham fan page if we want a group, sorry, fan group, where we come together to talk about David Beckham, look at pictures of David Beckham. <laughs> and everything. OK, so but only David Beckham is a, should be allowed the Facebook page of David Beckham because he is brand David Beckham. OK. Yes. But we can all come together, like I say, in a community with an interest in that area. OK, so groups are massive at the moment. Um, like I say, it's about building a community. One of my top tips is that people name their group after their business. So, for example, um, a driving instructor would use ABC Driving School as their business name and then ABC Driving School as their group name. Now. I know that I'm going to go in there and be sold to. What I need to base my group around is the interest or the support that that person is going to get. So I'm just example, a thinking few. <laughs> yeah. So we're looking at something like um, the Learner Drivers Advice Group. Okay? Yes. People come inside there to learn information. You show yourself as the expert. You show yourself as the knowledgeable person. You give stuff for free. OK, here is one minute value video of me giving you a top tip, because what's going to happen then is when they need that driving instructor, like we mentioned at the start, they're not going to go to Google. They're going to go to Facebook, into that group, and they're going to ask you for that driving lesson or whatever service it is you offer. So focus your group around the interest or the topic area that you're going to be teaching or giving value about rather than after your business name and use it as a way of showing your expertise as a way rather than selling 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 to people constantly definitely and i'm, I'm again i've just gone because we haven't actually done any pre-planning on this i'm like i could have just completely bombed there but this thank could you have gone really wrong I've, I've got a 10 out of 10 so far so <laughs> Right. Um, I was going to say, we, we. I think this is probably about fair to start sort of wrapping things up about yeah. now. So is there anything that you'd like to say to anybody that's watching or with regards to how to find you and things like that? And of course, I will put your your details in the comments below the post once we're once we're done. So, yeah, sure. Um, just just before I, I just say that, I'm just going to say one thing. Facebook is about consistent visibility. OK, there's two things that I find more than anything. One, you've got to be consistent. You've got to be on there showing your face, putting your content out there consistently. It's not good enough to post once or twice or, or for a whole week and then disappear. It doesn't work like that. So you have to be consistent. My second point is that you have to be relevant. Too many times do I see businesses posting stuff that isn't relevant. You may get a load of engagement from it, but unfortunately for you, you become irrelevant if you're not posting it. There's knowledgeable stuff about you, and therefore you will people will scroll past you in the future. So consistency and relevance. Um, if people obviously want to get in touch with me, uh, they can contact me through my Facebook page, which is Chris London Online. Um, they can visit the website, chrislondononline.co.uk. I offer online courses which teach everything I know that took my business to over £250,000. Um, I do online coaching, face-to-face um, -face coaching when we're allowed to, and um, I do outsourcing as well. So if you want any of your social media platforms managing for you, if you don't want to have to do it yourself, then you can get in touch, like I say, chrislondononline.co.uk. Cool stuff. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Chris. I have picked up some definitely some tips there that I didn't know. And I thought I wasn't doing too bad. I still don't think I am doing too bad. But, but, uh, but yes, there's always a few things you can't know everything, can you? So that was quite insightful for me this evening. Thank you very much. You're um, that's okay. I just thought I'd just say before we conclude everything this evening in that um, if you are watching and you do have any questions, if you let me get my little banner thing to go across the screen. If you use the hashtag, where's it gone? There you go. Ask McCall Media. I've got a Google alert sitting out there in the internet listening for that hashtag being used on any social media platform. So it will send me an email to say it's been used so I can pick up your question and I can use that as a live um, on obviously my, my actual broadcasts or I can connect 
connect Chris with any of your questions if uh, if you don't pop them in in, in my group, for example. So um, that's it from me today. Thank you very much, Chris. You're and welcome. Uh, we'll see you, or oh, not necessarily see you, but see you as my audience on next week's uh, live as well. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Bye. There we go. So now we are behind the scenes, are we not? No, it says it's. There we go. <laughs>